Good morning, everybody. Sunday, the 12th of September, 2021. Welcome to our service, a week to our ACM. So please come along and join us. I know if you've been missing and all these sort of things, but come and come and be with us. See how we've survived, literally, over the last two years. Um, come and hear what's been happening, what's going to happen, all these things. So join us for our ACM next Sunday. There will be tea afterwards. So come and join us. Also, the daily breads, um, these thing is, our daily breads um, for 2022 are available. Please WhatsApp me or let me know if you want one so I can just start putting together an order um, and we'll take it from there. So, yeah, um, I hope you enjoy the service with us this morning as we share together. <clears throat> our call to worship is taken from Psalm 19. The heavens, de- I love this, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. And then David prays these amazing words. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, as we come to worship you this morning, we pray that our the words of our mouth uh, may be pleasing in your sight. But Lord, that may we may like the stars just declare your beauty this morning, declare your grace, your magnificence, your awesomeness, your wonder, your power, your just Lord, may we just worship you this morning. Father, we are so thankful for the week that has passed. Uh, We're thankful for the little bit of rain that has fallen. Father, if that's the start of the summer rains, we are grateful. And Lord, you know how dry it is here. And we continue to pray for rain. But Lord, just thank you that you love us. Thank you that you care for us. Thank you that you have us right where we are right now. Um, And Lord, just thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, also, um, yeah, I've been challenged this week, Father, to ask the question, you know, in in the Beatitudes in Matthew, Lord, you say, blessed are those who mourn. Um, and Lord, often we interpret that as, as being grief, but it's not. It's about us mourning our sinfulness, repenting before you. And it's Father, something that we've lost in the church, the sense of repenting, the sense of coming clean, the sense of placing ourselves at your feet and saying, Father, forgive me, a sinner. And then identifying each and everything and placing it before you. Praying, mourning, grieving for our sinfulness so that we may be set free to carry on growing. And Lord, that we may understand the fullness of the grace of God through the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. Lord, just help us to mourn our sinfulness. Father, too, we pray for the word and the message that goes out this morning, that it comes from you, that it's your words, that you speak loudly and clearly, and that, Lord, it lands on fertile soil. And, Lord, may we take it out with us wherever we go. Bless the service, Lord, and may we bless you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, our reading for today is taken from James, James chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault, what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits in the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example, although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small runner whenever the pilot wants to go. 
Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great for- when it, what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and itself set on fire by hell. Phew, hectic. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless, evil, and full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be so. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear freaks? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Just that far this morning, and we ask that God bless that reading to us. Yeah, I think a safe bet this morning would be um, <laughs> our sinking hearts when I mentioned we were reading from James, because it's it's just one of those books that we know it's just going to stab us and say something hard and rough to us. Um, yeah, and you know, we might even discount it because it says not all should presume to be preachers and teachers. Well, here's the bad news. We all preachers and teachers. We call to share the gospel. Um, and when it comes to James, I think he speaks louder than most in a lot of ways because he's Jesus' brother. We know that he only believed Jesus once Jesus was resurrected. And he doesn't pull any punches. He tells it like it is. And in a sense, it makes it difficult to preach from. Because there's no mystery. There's no ambiguity. As he himself says in James 5.12, all you need to say is a simple yes or no. So look, we all know a few tongue-isms. Tongue-isms. Like when we joke, we say it was tongue-in-cheek. Going back to the old cowboy and Indian movies, <laughs> the Indians always used to say, oh, white man speak with forked tongue. You know, and then we fall over our words. We are tongue-tired. I mean, we watch sport, and the New Zealanders go, when they do the haka. Um, our music, our artists are sticking their tongues out everywhere. I mean, it's weird. Our tongues... <laughs> just everywhere so i just thought i'd look up a few more you know there's not too much to say this morning so i thought i'd look up a few more wise sayings and here are some of them some of them the tongue has no bones but is strong enough to break a heart so be careful with your words it's better to bite your tongue than to eat your words the tongue is but a small soft flesh Yet it is capable of breaking the strongest bonds and destroying the most powerful of relationships. Talk with your mind before you talk with your tongue. That's a nice one. Never trust your tongue when your heart is bitter. All of these are so wise. I mean, you know, it's it's nothing new. You know, even in James's day, it's nothing new. We know these things. The wise person has long ears and a short tongue. A sharp tongue and a dull mind is usually found in the same head. It's a bit derogatory, but anyway. Control your tongue. Think before you speak. You may not be able to take it back. The amazing truth about the human tongue. This one I found fascinating and so, so true. It takes three years to learn how to use it, but it takes a lifetime to learn when and where to use it. Nelson Mandela said a good head and a good heart are always a formidable combination. But when you add to that a literate tongue or pen, then you have something very, very special. We have two ears and one tongue so that we should listen more and talk less. Here's a nice one too. Who cares for your beauty if your tongue is ugly? A human slips more by his tongue than by his foot. 
As a rudder steers a ship, the tongue steers your life. Watch your words. Now that takes us back to James and, you know, when he spoke about the rudder. So coming back to James, I just want to pause a moment and just say to us, we must be careful when we start reading this because we, we see the metaphors and they're very powerful, the rudder, the horses, but all those sort of things. But they distract us from the key message or they can distract us, <coughs> sorry, from the key message. Because it's not about speech in general, but rather turning the focus onto Christians, you and I, and how we speak to other people. People who are created in God's image. Using his own words, James says, with the tongue we praise the Lord our Father, and with it we curse human beings, who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing, my brothers and sisters, this should not be. It can't be clearer than that. He's calling us to account about abusive, violent, oppressive, othering language. All these weird things that we've put out there. You know, and when I speak of otherings, I just want to step back into the world for a moment. And I'd like to say we need to be aware. We need to be aware. And this is very sad, actually, because our tongues today have become replaced by social media. In short, the caution, consider your words, whether they're spoken or digital. Someone once said, be careful of the words you speak. Keep them soft and sweet, because you never know from day to day which ones you will have to eat. It's getting rough out there. It really is getting rough out there. Words are taking out of context, especially on the social media. Words deemed to be racist, words deemed to offend, words that come back to bite. It's a wild, wild word out there. So much so that the world is even trying to regulate it. I don't know how, and I'm definitely not sure how it will even work or where they're going to get this right. But bills are being promulgated right now. Bills like the promotion of equality and prevention of unfair discrimination. Amendment bill. Wow, it's just a mouthful. Bills that just limit us more and more and make us more exposed to, to lawsuits and all sorts of things. It's really, really crazy. But I'm, uh, yeah, let, let's just leave it there. Let me leave it there and get back to what James is saying. James, by account, as I said, is calling us to account. Um, for abusive, violent, oppressive, and othering language. He's calling us to check the words we bring into the church, the worldliness we bring in with our mouths. Our Christianese, if you like, our God speak, making us seem holier than others, and our words that even condemn and exclude others. James says we bless and curse with the same instrument. And to check what comes out of our mouths, what fruit do our mouths produce? As my mom always used to say, and this is the polite version, okay? If you have nothing good to say, then keep quiet. So maybe, just maybe in conclusion, James is inviting us all to consider the importance of silence. Silence, not only to hear God, that hold, be still, and know that I am God, but also the spiritual practice of bridling our tongues. Because we would do well to remember that the tongue can be both positive and destructive, depending upon the words that you allow yourselves to utter. And I want to end this morning with two quotes, and maybe we can take them home as challenges. One's from Joel Olstein, he's on the TBN network thingy. You can change the world by changing your words. Remember, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Very powerful. And the second, Nikki Gumbel, Alpha Course. I'm sure we've all run it somewhere along the line and heard about it. He says, <clears throat> the words of the tongue should have three gatekeepers. Is it true? Is it kind? And is it necessary? 
So think, it's the acronym again, think before you speak. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, yeah, it, it's wonderful when we can't really add to, to the message, when we can't expound too much because it is so crystal, crystal clear. So, Lord, just guide us and lead us. And, Father, I just want to read James, uh, David's words again in Psalm 19. And this is our prayer for today, Lord. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts, Lord, be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. May the words of our mouths be pleasing in your sight, Lord. So go with us into this week. Strengthen us and encourage us, Lord. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. I pray that you have been truly, truly blessed. That you know Jesus loves you. That he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And let's watch what we say this week. Go in peace and in love. And I say to us all this morning, now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace in Jesus' name.